Hello everyone and welcome to a very exciting time in spaceflight history. For the first time, two of the world's largest rockets, Starship and SLS, are built at the same time, which is pretty cool. So in today's video, I'm going to be hopping into Kerbal Space Program and comparing the two rockets. We'll be cross-cutting between each of their two respective missions. SLS will be performing the Artemis 1 mission, complete with a lunar flyby, re-entry, and finally landing of the Orion capsule, while Starship does a fully reusable orbital flight, catching included. If you do happen to enjoy today's video, please do consider subscribing, but without further ado, let's get launching. All right, welcome to the launch pad where I have the two rockets positioned next to each other. This is actually what they would look like if they were sat next to each other. This is uh, correctly scaled and uh, some of you, me included, are actually quite surprised how small SLS looks. But, uh, you know, speaking of SLS, it's going to be the first one to go. So it's going to fire up its engines and get ready to get launching. There we go. Boy, at the little bit sideways. Let's straighten that out a little bit, shall we? Uh, yeah, that's actually just a little bit of a quirk of the mod I used for the launch tower. I used a modular launch pads and there's no built-in SLS launch pad so I kind of had to make one out of some of the other parts and it didn't didn't totally fit together as you could as you could see but uh, SLS is uh, on its way uh, to orbit a little bit steeper of a launch profile as uh, that's how it launches because it has a it has a high apoaps and periaps so it's an eccentric orbit is what the thing launches into um, and there go the SRBs and this thing has very 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 little thrust um, thrust to weight ratio rather with just the four RS-25s. It actually has around the same amount of thrust as a Falcon 9, uh, which is pretty, pretty surprising. Um, but yeah, this thing is quite slow, but uh, it does have a really high payload capacity. The SLS, SLS Block 1, which is what I'm flying right now, has a total payload capacity of 95 tons. I don't know why they couldn't just add just a, maybe just to stretch the tanks a little bit, get up to that nice little 100, but whatever, you know, you do you, NASA. Um, but we are just about ready to cut our core stages. It is basically out of fuel. Then we'll be able to stage it away and uh, we'll be ready to actually we'll be crossfading over to Starship, which will be getting itself into orbit and kind of crossfading, like I said. Um, so yeah, get rid, of the, get rid of the orange tank, get rid of the launch escape system, and then we're gonna get rid of those fairings, and then we can get ready to go over to Starship, which has a very lovely collection of mods that are working together to write a very cool very, very cool Starship launch sequence thing here. We got a tower, we got Mechazilla, we got the QDR, and we got some very cool looking mods for the ship itself as we have now just lifted off and are gonna make our way into orbit. Uh, if you want to uh, download some of the mods that are used in this video, everything will be, of course, linked in the description. Uh, massive shout out to all of the creators of these mods, because there, there's a lot of them, and they've all done a really, really good job. So, um, Starship is, is going to be making its way into orbit. Um, obviously, like I said at the intro of the video, we are going to be fully recovering both the ship and the booster. Um, and the booster is going to be coming in towards the chopstick and coming in for a little catch maneuver, which is very interesting because I, I landed, I did the catch completely manually, which is quite difficult. Uh, I've done it, I've, I've done these kind of a few times in streams and other videos, and it is never easy. We're going to go and separate the stages, and then the ship is going to make its way into orbit. We'll be checking back on that in a little bit. But we're going to go ahead and first look at the booster, which is now doing its boost back burn. Only has the nine center engines lit right now, as uh, that's, I think, what they're going to do in real life. It really is quite takes a long time to cancel all that velocity with only the nine engines going, but uh, it manages to do it. This thing has so much fuel, so fuel is not even close to a problem as we go ahead and do the boost back burn. Now, while the sh uh, booster is making its way back, we will head back over and check up on SLS, which has now made its way into orbit, or is making its way into orbit, just finishing up one quick little burn, and then it'll be ready to get moving. This is the Orion uh, the Orion stage capsule thing, whatever you want to call it, um, it's getting set up for its uh, translunar injection, um, and the SLS is actually capable of delivering a total of 27 tons to a translunar injection, and Orion weighs a total of 26 and a half tons, so not that much margin left on on the SLS, using almost all that performance of the rocket to get this thing out to a lunar injection direction. Lunar injection direction? I know how to speak. 
Um, and then we're gonna just uh, fine tune a little bit of a correction burn there with our Orion service module. The uh, engine sound unfortunately doesn't work in this mod, kind of unfortunate. But what a really cool looking plume, it's a waterfall plume. But uh, yeah, go ahead and we'll get set up on a free return trajectory. And uh, while the Orion makes its way around Zaman, we will be heading back to check up on our loverly deverly booster, which is now coming in for its landing maneuver. Is it landing catching? Does it really count as landing? Because it doesn't actually touch land. It, I don't know, I don't know, technicalities. Um, but we're going to come in here. I actually didn't even have trajectories installed, um, so we're really flying blind here. So I kind of had to just guess with my boost back burn. Did take a few attempts. But here we are, we're close enough, we have enough margin on the fuel, so we're going to be lighting up our nine engines, and then we'll be dropping down to three engines when we get really close to the chopstick, just for a really fine control over our vertical speed. But here we are coming in now, just doing a little bit of a translation as we get closer to the chopsticks. The one thing you'll quickly see me do is when you get really close, I actually very quickly switch the vessel and actually have to close the chopsticks because it's a different it's a different craft and I have to just move it over because the chopsticks are open from the launch. Uh, and I have to close them or else we're not going to be able to be doing any catching. It was very difficult. But there we go, switch into the three and there we go, very, 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 very fast closing of the arms and then now this is there's not a lot of margin for error here because the chopsticks are basically as wide as the booster so like if you end up just bonking into the chopsticks you just flip over and crash so not a good scenario so we're gonna try and come in nice and slow nice and slow keep it gentle keep it gentle and trying to get her down on the grid fit. touchdown contact whatever you want to call it and that is like that is barely on, but it's on. That counts. That counts. That counts. Successful landing. Catching. Uh, but we'll go ahead and check back up on our ship, which is making its way into orbit, because we also have to remember we have to be landing that ship too, which is going to be really cool. And we're landing the ship right on the landing pad, sort of landing pad, the piece of concrete land area, sort of. I don't think it's meant to be a landing pad, but we're, we're going to be using it as a landing pad sunny i don't know what, what 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 am i talking about anywho um yeah it's gonna be cool again you know, the ship and the the booster next to each other gonna be pretty epic but um we have now just our three vacuum engines boosting us on our way to orbit of the ship of the ship that didn't make sense grammatically but uh yeah six engines i know elon's been saying they might be doing nine engines on the uh on the top there the upper stage It'd be really cool if you see nine um, like, especially if you realize how much thrust that starship would have if they do 33 Raptor 2s. Like, oh my lordy. Like, um, so SLS has a total of 39,144 kilonewtons of thrust with, um, that's its bottom stage to so the four RS-25s and the two SRBs. Speaking of SLS, by the way, we're just going to go ahead and checking up on it as it does its lunar flyby. Um, but yeah, 39,144 kilonewtons of thrust on SLS. Starship with Raptor 2s with 33 of them will do 75,900 kilonewtons of thrust. Almost double SLS. Literally almost double, which is insane. Insane. Like... You guys have seen SLS. It's a giant rocket. Now imagine it doing double the thrust. Like, holy lordy. <laughs> oh my. Uh, right now, though, like the B4 S20, um, Starship 420, um, it only has 52,490 kilonewtons of thrust. That's 29 Raptor 1s, which is crazy. There's like a, there's a, like a 23,000 kilonewton of thrust difference from... 29 Raptor 1s to 33 Raptor 2s. Like, it's actually pretty absurd how much extra thrust they're going to be able to get out of Starship. That's not, that thing, like, if you, like, if it's going to take off quick from the pad with 29, like, imagine Raptor 2. The thing is just going to be, like, launching, like, a missile off the pad. It's going to be wild. It's going to be wacky. But, um, yeah, Orion, I'm kind of just talked through most of our re-entry, but the Orion is now coming down for a landing in the ocean just to the east of the Kerbal Space Center so hopefully pretty easy to recover it's actually a few hundred kilometers so it might be a little bit of a boat ride but they'll be fine they will be fine I did bring Kerbals on this one so it's yeah we'll start our Artemis too in it in it um, but there we go full deploy of the parachutes and here we are coming in for a nice early morning splashdown we Kerplunk Welcome back to Kerbin, Kerbals. 
But we have we're not done landing are we no 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 we have starship to land yes sir um, She's coming in. I'm trying to get this thing angled correctly because unlike the Orion Rex you can go for a really accurate landing because we need to be landing her back at the landing pad because reusability because we're really cool. Yes, we are um, through 30 kilometers here. Um, this is uh, Kari's starship by the way. I do plan on making a video actually comparing um, some of the Starship moss. I think that might be some good fun. But this is Kari's Starship we're using today. Uh, pretty, pretty good Starship. Quite similar to the uh, Cow Space Starship. But Cow Space and Starship doesn't have a Super Heavy. So, I mean, I guess you could use Cow's Upper Stage and Kari's Bottom Stage and combine them. But uh, Kari actually has a little bit, little bit better controllability on the ship. I feel like, as you can see, it kind of is like kind of meh, 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 meh as I turn it. It kind of makes you think it's just really strong reaction wheels, but oh well, it's a it's, a, it's so much easier to fly than Cow. I think I've actually even turned up his uh, his reaction wheel strength. Um, either way, I made a video on his starship. Too. Ah, too many. I've made too many videos. <laughs> but uh, we are now in the belly flop, coming down for a landing back at the launch pad. Um, yeah, unlike us, uh, starship is reusable. OMG, starship stand. Whatever, whatever will we do? <laughs> but here we are coming in get ready for the flip maneuver you guys know the drill we're gonna be lighting up three engines and then uh, for this landing we're actually gonna be turning off just one engine coming down on two of our sea level raptor engines as the three come on right now flipping it upwards tucking in those bottom fins and there we are flipped up right gonna go ahead and kill one engine right and now let me go ahead and fold in the top fins and there we can come in getting ready for a nice landing. I'm taking it nice and slow here because uh, I feel like I was kept overcorrecting on this landing and kind of sending up like a mile in the wrong direction, like ramming into the tower or something like that. But here she comes, nice, soft, controlled landing. Kind of like SN15's landing. I kind of barely touched the side of the pad, really off to the side there, but you know, it made it and we are down. Success and no joke about three seconds after I finished recording the super heavy fell off Like I hit stop recording and then I went to look up over at the tower and the super heavy had literally just fallen off and was crashing and exploding So, you know good thing I stopped recording when I did but uh, here's all the channel members Here's all the patrons big. Thanks to you guys and that's gonna do it for me today So I'd like to thank you for watching for the next time Please write a comment to this video once again. Thank you for watching for the next time and bye